The following podcast is improvised satire and all characters are fictional. Hello, dear listener. I'm Dean Ardenfell, and this is The Corporation, the podcast where I interview employees of the many subsidiaries of my favorite multinational conglomerate, Hogswood Cooper Media. My first guest is the Northeast Regional Director of Acquisitions for Purloin Realty, a residential home buying firm that specializes in identifying families that have fallen on hard times and aggressively attempting to purchase their homes in cash for an almost insultingly low amount of money. Purloin then flips the houses or develops the land for more lucrative use. In his spare time, he's working on building a jetpack in his garage. Please welcome Ryan Bedfellow. Hello, Ryan. Hey there. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's really happy to be here today. Great to have you. Um I what a what a what an interesting job you have. You're you're in the real the real estate game, but uh not yep. not the way some people are. You're not selling houses, you're more buying them, huh? Yeah, what we're doing is we're buying undervalued assets and then we're doing a price arbitrage on them. We're recognizing opportunities mm. that other buyers aren't recognizing leveraging technology okay. and then selling them at a great deal that also creates value for the buyer. Okay, interesting. There was a lot of words in that, and I'm not sure I understood all of them. Um, but what you're essentially saying, it seems like you're coming in at a time when a family might be really hard up for cash and uh, sort of pursuing them to try to get them to um, maybe sell their, their maybe sell their house even if they weren't planning on it. Yeah, what we do is we go to towns in America where there was a thriving industry before and we knock on doors and we say, hey, look, you made a decision. You made a choice to buy a home that you weren't certain you could pay for in full, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry that steel is no longer the backbone of your town. Sure. And what we do is we say, we can help you with that. Uh -huh. We create value for them. Yeah. We buy their home and then they can go live in a mobile home or go, go to a, maybe another state yeah. where there's yeah. a thriving industry that they can then go be a part of. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, some would say that, you know, uh, not everybody has the uh, flexibility to do that, to, to, to up and move to an entirely different state, or, you know, just because the economy in their place, in their town went bust. Um, but I guess if they are getting some money out of their home, um, then th then maybe they have some money in their pocket, to, some, some walking around money to try to get across the state border or somewhere where the economy might be better, right? Exactly. Like you're really if they helping them out. Yes, we're helping people. We're giving them options mm. by giving them liquidity and getting them out of their debt. They can then move to a place, yeah, outside of the state border, outside of the country border, should they even decide to. Right. We're helping people and empowering them by buying out their mortgage and then reselling their home to someone at a fire sale price on both sides. I see. Yeah. And I mean, you said the thing about um, how you're really, um, <laughs> you're really helping. Um, you're, you're really, you're getting in there when people may have committed to a long-term mortgage without realizing that, you know, on a 30 year mortgage, you have no idea what's going to happen 15 years down the road when someone, you know, breaks mm -hmm. their leg or loses their job or what have you. Um, but you're Precisely. saying it's, it's, uh, it's irresponsible of them to get themselves in that amount of debt. Why should they think that their foundry job in Rhode Island is going to be there forever? Sure. It's a foundry. It was found and it's not going to be found forever. They found it. Now <laughs> find a new job in a new home. Okay. And at Purloin, it's their purview to find a new home. Wow. That's a lot of log a lot of language loopholes that you just jumped through there. Uh, very interesting. Um, so what happens when you got your hands on that? Now, well, I should back up. So when you when you pursue these people to try to get them to sell their homes, which they may or may not want to sell to you, um, you know, there have been, there's been some criticism around the methodology that you use. Uh, some have called it even sort of borderline stalking where, um, you know, you're taking photos of their house and leaving the photos in their mailbox with a note that says, call me and things like that to just make it really clear that you are, uh, you know, an aggressive buyer. <laughs> Yes, our agents are very uh, committed and consistent. I wouldn't say that any of those language choices are fair. What we are is we're cons we're cons committed to making sure people have options mm -hmm. in a home that they maybe 
didn't have the money to buy in the first place. Sure. So we're doing them a service by touching base with them regularly, mm -hmm. sometimes two to four times a day to make sure that they know that they can be bought out immediately, right. severely lower than the price they committed to in their mortgage. And I have to imagine that that technique works because you wouldn't do it otherwise. And I'm sure that it, it you know, for lack of a better term, kind of wears them down after a while. Yeah. Without a doubt, we, we actually make sure they know that they made a terrible choice. We'll call them names, we'll call them, oh, yeah. we'll leave them voicemails, we'll say, you did a bad thing, uh. you did a bad thing. And they hear that, and then they feel bad about themselves. Instead of, you know, being bailed out in a, in a way that maybe a private bank would, you know, privatize losses and po uh, redistribute, pri you know what I'm saying. Sure, so, yeah. So what's more important is that we make sure people know that it was their fault that their industry was outsourced to a country outside of ours, mm. and it was their fault that they committed to a mortgage even though their union told them they had job security. No one is responsible for you but yourself. Yeah, that's the thing uh, about it right now is a lot of people like to place blame. They're so quick to place blame on others. They place blame on the on the bank that got them the risky mortgage. They place blame on the on the company that outsourced their jobs uh, or, or the or the union busters that wouldn't allow them to unionize. Um, but at the end of the day, you're making your own choices. And if you can't be responsible for for, you know, your own situation, well, you know, it's maybe it's time to you know, suck it up and, you know, move on to something else. I couldn't say it better myself. I think you're spot on with with the leverage that technology brings us. They could have been learning new skills in the meantime. Sure. They could have been on YouTube learning how to bend uh, bend plastic and create um, new tools out of recycled plastic. Mm. They could have been on a Skillshare learning photography so they could take wedding photos down at the abandoned loft where weddings are now happening. Sure. That abandoned loft was where they used to do steel working. America is the land of innovation and ingenuity. Yeah. And Ryan Bedfellow is bedfellows with innovators and entrepreneurs. I, d I am noticing a trend here where it seems like you tend to Ants, you tend to end a lot of the answers to your questions with sort of a sound bite. Are you hoping that I'll grab onto that sound bite and, and publicize it? The conversations between me and my PR team. I won't be able to make you privy to, mm. but let me just say that when you work with Purloin, you'll be purring like a cat that wow. is blissed out from its kibble. But dogs have kibble, so you can get rid of that one. But yeah, we, you know what yeah, I we'll mean. Probably, yeah, I might lose that one. But, um, but you know, they're all, not all gems. Um, so uh, you said something before about um, artificial intelligence being, uh, you know, b b making you more money yes. out of this deal. How does that work? Well, we use a complicated logarithmic algorithm. And what we do is when we take photos of the house, we take the photo ID and the photo DNA, compare it to other houses in similar foot, uh, similar size, similar areas, and we use that algorithm to price it automatically. A human being is not involved in our pricing system at all. We can go from listing to pricing to selling in one day. Is that so? And you do all this yes. auto automatically with your logarithmic algorithm. Yes, it's a logarithmic algorithm wow. because it works exponentially in a phase of one to two. I don't know what that means. Our IT department tells me it's very fast. I see. And is this like um, the way that like we can never trade as fast or as more as sophisticated in a sophisticated a manner on the stock market as like a computer can because they're making like millions of decisions a second and changing the price all the time. Like, are you changing the price based on demand? Are you driving the price up with computers? How does it work? We price units. Yeah, exactly. So what we do is we price units in a way that leverages us, but also creates value for the consumer, but makes sure that makes sure that Purloin Realty is always the one making a profit. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's the ultimate goal and you know, that you're growing at all times um, because that's the most important thing with, with capitalism. Um, you know, when you're, um, 
of course, you know, you have also been criticized. It's not just steel towns. It's also places with like almost no vacancy cities where there's a huge amount of demand. You're coming in and attempting to, um, you know, again, for lack of a better term, lowball people out of their homes and uh, who might be, you know, have a lot of medical debt or what have you and uh, try to try to force them out so that you can either, um, you know, rent that space uh, at an exorbitant rent to someone else or mm. even just tear the whole thing down and build luxury condos on the site. Um, a lot mm. of people see that as opportunistic and, and borderline inhumane. But how do you how do you respond to that? In America, we have this golden opportunity on the hill that Reagan talked about in 1980 mm. to create value for ourselves and for our clients. It's not my responsibility to determine whether someone bought health insurance when they were maybe 19 and when they were like 19 or 21 years old and they decide they need it suddenly when they get sick. Well, you know what? Us humans don't have a responsibility to help each other in times of need. Mm. What we do have a responsibility for is to provide sick Airbnbs in downtown areas with slit, quickly slapped up LED signs that say, vibes here. Mm. That's the responsibility that we have okay. to each yeah, other the, as human beings. The choice beings. of the word sick there might have been a little bit... <laughs> there might have been a better word for that. You mean sick as in... Eclectic. Dope. <laughs> dope. Yeah. Eclectic. Sure. Yes. I see now. I see now. But you're saying it's it's the it's the sick person's fault for uh, not getting the right insurance or whatever um, earlier on in life. And then when, of course, when when they've got the gall to uh, to to get cancer at age 30, then um, that's that's not your problem or your responsibility. Right. It's like the stoic philosopher Finasteride says. He says when one gets sick. One made the choice to be ill many moons ago. Hmm. hmm. Never heard of that person or that quote. Um, but fascinating. You'll have to stuff. go deep into the Stoics yeah, for I, that one. I'll have to. I guess I will have to do a little more research. Um, I, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that you have a hobby, which is that you are building a jetpack in your garage. Uh, yes, how indeed. Fun is I that? am. Wow. How'd you get into that? Well, I've always been a propulsion geek. I've always very much been obsessed with thrust mm. and I've been I've I I've been working on this for a long time and only recently was I able to fly above my own house wow. next to a drone. So I have the drone follow me while I'm on the jetpack. Cool. And I like to fly above my own house because legally in Austin where I'm based, mm. you can have a, a drone above your own domicile up to 5,000 feet. So I like to do that and uh, get near the jets. Get near the jets. I get. I like to get near the jets that are leaving the commercial airspace. Okay. I like to say to the JetBlue people heading to Boca, Raton, or mm. I like to the United flights to Maui. Mm. I like to wave at them and have them wave down to me as I fly near them in my jetpack. So you must be on uh, an approach path or something to the airport. I am on an approach path at Austin Bergstrom. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. And so uh, is this built from a kit or are you ma doing it all? You're making it all up yourself. Like how, how are you building this thing? I'm an autodidact. I'm a self-taught wow. learner, mm. bootstrap puller. Sure. And when I go on YouTube and type in Jetpack, I'm going to sit there and take whatever time necessary to build the components mm. of a Jetpack. That's the type of guy I am. I don't sit around waiting for people to pull on me and tug on me and make me do stuff. Sure. The pull and the tug comes from within. Right, right, right. I mean, wh why would any? I mean, why would anybody come up to you and pull on you and tug on you and try to make you to make a jetpack? You're gonna have to do it yourself if you're interested in it, right? It seems like there's a large contingency in this country of people who want to be pulled on and yeah, tugged on. For sure. And I'm not interested in that. I'm my no. own person. No, you know, I don't need a tug and pull. No, no. And we all we use a lot of uh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps metaphor, but I think we need to update that and refresh it. You're so good with language. I think um, I think pull pull and tug yourself is really the the metaphor we should be using. Pull and tug yourself by your Clark straps, your Clark's straps. What's that? Clark's, the shoes. Oh, the oh yes, of course. Yeah, we should yeah. update the Pull boots too. Don't wear boots. boots anymore. Yeah, although you are in Texas. Yeah, because I am in Texas, but I'm in the um, <clears throat> new money 
area oh, good. of Texas. That's good yeah. to hear. Yeah. Austin. <laughs> um, well, great. Well, I have to move on to my second guest, but I hope you'll stick around and, and join us a little later. I'd be happy to. Excellent. Um, folks, my second guest today has a, a collection of exciting toys she wants to tell you about. Uh, we're going to find out what that means. But first, let's pause and hear a quick word from our sponsor. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And we're back. I'd like to remind you at this point, as I do every show, that I, Dean Ardenfell, am not and have never been an employee of Hogswood Cooper Media or any of its subsidiaries. Okay, we've been talking to Ryan Bedfellow, Regional Director for Purloin Realty, and now I'd like to bring in my second guest, who works for a totally different subsidiary of Hogswood Cooper. She is the leader of guest engagement at Traditional Teddy, the factory tourist attraction that encourages kids and adults alike to build their own stuffed animals based on their favorite conservative heroes. From Reagan teddy bears to Marjorie Taylor Green dolls, Traditional Teddy is a one-stop shop for toys devoted to your family's heroes and my... De devoted to your family's heroes, and my guest leads the factory tours and assists guests in the toy building process. On weekends, she is a country music wedding DJ. Please welcome Charlene Mops. Hello, Charlene. Hi, Dean. Wow, what a cool thing. Uh, what a cool place you work for. So people can just walk right on in and, and make their own toys, teddy bears, dolls, etc. Huh? Well, you can't just walk right in. You have to sign up for a tour and then and okay. pay. And sure. it's, you have to pay for it. Well, yeah, um, I figured that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing is free. <laughs> Nothing is free, Dean. But yeah, uh, other than that, it's pretty simple. Yeah. And then I lead all of our guests on our fantastic tours. Yeah, that sounds exciting. Yeah. So they get yeah. the, it's almost like, I think of it like almost like one of those ice cream places where they put all the ingredients on the slab and they mix them all up for you like your own custom version, huh? You can kind of pick and choose. Well, yeah, I think that's a um, that's a four out of ten of an analogy for what we're okay. going for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I like my analogies to be rated on a scale of one to ten. <laughs> that was a four, but okay. uh, base, yeah, it's 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 you know you're not completely right, but I gave you some bonus points there for the effort. Appreciate it, appreciate it. So, uh, so what's what's a you know take us through the experience? I bought a ticket and I've come in. What what kind of what what kinds of decisions am I going to have to make? And and what do you like? Uh, what are you going to show me I can, that I can do? Well, the first thing all of our tour guests do is they fill out a ballot. And uh, our goal is to not let anybody through a tour unless their uh, beliefs align with ours. You understand. I see. So is it a mock yeah. ballot or is it an actual ballot? Uh, no, it's real. Every vote counts. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. So are you filing those? I mean, I, I'm getting in the weeds already, but are you yeah. filing those ballots on behalf of those people? That's right. Yeah. Um, MTG supports us and uh, we give them right to her and she knows what to do with them. Excellent. Excellent. So yeah. it, it's entirely possible that someone could come in and fill out this thing thinking it was a mock ballot, have their vote counted, and then also go to the ballot on election day and vote again. Yeah. Dean, I think that's like a two out of 10 uh, okay. hypothetical situation. Sure, I'm sure uh, it never happens. I'm sure it never happens. Unless no. unless it's, uh, you know, the liberals. They're, they're, they're um, of course... Uh, um, yeah. uh, election fraud is all over that, right? Ramp. It's all over. That is a 10 out of 10 statement, Dean. Uh, <laughs> that is absolutely correct. And we've actually had our fair share of issues with the Dems coming through the, the factory trying oh, to mess some, you know, uh, you bad uh, actors coming through and, and uh, hired uh, actors to make a big scene in your place. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you know, uh, Michelle Obama herself one time, uh, l let me just tell you a quick story to help uh, propel my point forward. Sure. Um, so uh, Michelle Obama one time came in and, and she said, um, I'm Charlene Mops and I'm here to give tours today. And, and Dean, I bet you can see why that's an issue. Uh, that's your name and your job. That's exactly right, Dean. And so it was just absolute chaos. And the I, 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 I was beside myself. I, I'm sure. What a strange thing. Do you think her people were, were like, here's the name of the woman. She's out sick today. Pretend you're her. You don't even look like her. We we actually don't look anything alike. No. Uh, I wear glasses, you know, and so yeah. it's uh, very different visual appearances. And yeah, I think her people, of course, were all over it. I mean, look, like, come on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, well, well, what yeah. was what do you think she? What was what what was the goal that she and her people had when they came in and tried to impersonate you? Well, like any impersonator, they're going to come in and, and teach our kids, our tour, our tour, uh, if, like attendees mm. that, um, you know, they're going to try to push their agenda, Dean. And that's not what we want. We want our kids coming in and having a grand old time with the grand old party. You know what I mean? GOP sure. baby. Yeah. And, uh, 
and basically walking out with their favorite, you know, Sarah Palin or uh, uh, Melissa Joan Hart Teddy. And and when Michelle Obama tries to play me, th- those are not the Teddies being built. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure she was just trying to Frankenstein some Joe Biden together from pieces of uh, of uh, what's his name? <laughs> um, <laughs> from pieces of um, Barack Obama. <laughs> No, yeah. I mean conservative yeah. pieces. Oh. Like who ran against who ran with Sarah Palin there? Oh, so, uh, sure. Uh, that was um, that. Uh, uh, who was that? That was like um, hundred years ago. That was so long ago. Yeah, I like to keep up with my current events. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know who that was? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, the war hero. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so. Well, getting on to the experience for your attendee, uh, attendees, um, yeah. you know, the kids come in, they like to play with, you know, stuff and put it all together. Uh, what, what kinds of what kinds of things can I build? Well, uh, traditionally, Dean, it's just teddies, um, you know, of your favorite GOP um, mm-hmm. figure. And, and you really get to pick. We have, of course, we have some templates, but we want your imagination to run wild with the face that you make and the rights that you give. Um, oh, now, really? I will. Yeah. Yeah. And now I will say in 2024, Dean, we are have a new a new thing coming that I personally am really excited for. Um, as a woman, you know, my voice gets heard quite often where I work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, and, uh, my paycheck definitely reflects it. Wow. <laughs> You're laughing a lot there. You're laughing a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so well, well, let me not, let, let me not talk too much about me. Uh, so anyway, this really cool thing that's happening in 2024, Dean is, um, instead of your traditional Teddy, now you can build modes of transportation based on your favorite GOP figures. L- l- let me hit you with a couple examples. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. So, so, so get this, uh, you can, you can take your, um, you can take your Cadence Cameron's Bureau for a drive in your in in one of Ben Carson's cars. It's called the Ben Carson. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. And let me hit you with another one, Dean. So yeah. um, so get this. So Sarah Palin can be um uh c- can drive and um and park at the dock to gut all aboard her Ted cruise ship. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. a great one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's I so thought fun. of those. I thought of those two. And, um, yeah. after I hit those two ideas, my, uh, my boss said, um, no more. <laughs> and that was really sweet. Oh yeah. I see. So he, he was yeah. either, um, maxed out on your ideas per- personally or threatened or something, I, uh, something like <laughs> that. Uh, because I mean, they're brilliant ideas. No. I, I can't imagine why yeah. they wouldn't want to hear more from you. Um, yeah, no. why do you think they that certainly- is? Well, they they certainly wouldn't be threatened by me, Dean. They value my opinion, and my paycheck definitely <laughs> reflects that. Yeah, you keep saying that. I wonder if you've seen the paychecks of any of your uh, other, co- uh, you know, colleagues. Um, <laughs> well, I have, <laughs> I have, yeah, and okay. I'm very happy. Sure, uh, I'm sure you are. So, uh, so you've you. It's what a what a fun idea. It's almost like the Barbie yeah. Dreamhouse kind of thing, where you start, you know, creating these uh, diverse revenue streams of like, of course, they got to buy the car, the Ted Cruz ship, uh, separately. I'm sure from the teddy bear, right? Every piece is a separate cost. Yeah. And that's, and that's really, yeah. um, for, uh, for streamlining reasons, you know, it's to, mm-hmm. it's to make the, the whole system work just a lot faster. And so every little piece is its individual purpose. And, and just like us, you know, I'm an individual piece of my company, um, traditional Teddy, and mm-hmm. I have a purpose and every little piece has to work together. And so I must, I must get, I must cost something else, something other than what all the other pieces cost. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's an interesting, and I, 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 yeah. I hesitate to even make metaphors anymore because I know you're going to rate them. I but, sure will. But it, but we're all cogs in a in a great machine, right? And uh, and so wh- you, you keep going back to like your small. You have a small role, and you are compensated in a small way, uh, a way in which you're happy to be compensated, but a small way in this larger organization, and and the and the value associated. To, you have value in how much, you know, profit you bring to the company. And then that's the extent of it, right? Uh, uh, Dean, you were, you started off going strong. You were at an eight out of 10 and then you lost me at the end there. Yeah. Did I? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, that's okay. So, uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's a, maybe it's a, a weird question, but I kind of wonder, do people ever try to put things together that don't seem to belong together? Or they try to put like, you know, real like muscle bodies on like, you know, like, can you, can you mix and match, uh, different heads and bodies and things like that? 
Um, you sure can. You can sure try. But that goes to our ratings team at the end. Um, you're sensing a theme here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We love rating things. And I'm not on that team. I'm just the leader of guest engagement. But when you get to the end of the tour, mm. uh, of course, in order to leave the factory with your uh, creation, you have to pass another test. And if you oh, don't really? pass the test, you get shot right in the nose. Yeah. A shot in the nose. <laughs> with with what? Right. With what? <laughs> You really want to know? Oh no, uh, probably not. No, I think uh, okay. I think okay. I'll just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll move on from that. So yeah. I, I, I know there's another thing you do, which is you staple like a almost like a bill of rights for each teddy bear right to their paw on their way out, and they yeah. get to like the guests get to kind of select from a list of uh, GOP values, like which ones that they want on their little teddy bear's bill of rights. That's cute. Yeah, yeah, that's really cute. Um, just the other day we had this little girl. I, I her name was like um Sally or something. That wasn't her name, but I I didn't pay much attention when she said it. And anyway, she said, um, I'm going to staple, she actually wanted to create her own, um, some of her own like additions to the Bill of Rights because, Mm. you know, uh, kids and um, yeah. And, and hers just said, no gays. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. I thought so too. I thought it was really cute. Yeah. I thought it was really adorable. It really shows that she's, you know, she's, she's getting, she's getting it from home. Like she's, uh, her parents are teaching her all sorts of stuff at home probably. Yeah. And we work closely with the parents to make sure that the values that they have, you know, really uh, are getting instilled in the kids that come to us because we don't want to be the ones to teach them. Yeah. Do you ever have kids who uh, disagree with their parents and want some kind of, you know, liberal talking point printed on their bear? Oh yeah, actually, uh, Dean, that does happen. Um, not not super frequently because of the tests in the beginning. But if they happen to make it through the ballot and and make it into the factory and yeah. try to push their own agenda, um, well, you're holding up you're holding up a spanking paddle right now. I see a like a like a yeah. like a wooden spanking paddle. Yeah. 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 So Dean, yeah. this is our wooden spanking panel and um, you just get bopped right in the tushy if you, if you do something you're not supposed to do. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's an, yeah. that's something our parents used to do to us and now you're not supposed to do it, but it, but it works, right? Right. Quote, t- quote, you're not supposed to do it. End quote. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, you're not supposed to do a lot of things now. It's all been canceled. Yeah, it's all. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Tell me about it, Dean. This is a crazy world we live in where people aren't allowed to say certain words, you know, <laughs> and then. Uh, and yeah, you, you get it. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And so on your on your weekends, uh, you, mm-hmm. you're a country, a country music wedding DJ, huh? Yes, Dean, that's correct. Um, I live and die for country music. Um, wow. you know, I don't, yeah. I don't know that I've ever been to a wedding with just country music playing on the uh, from the DJ booth. Oh, well, it's very popular. And um, generally, I'll just play Shania Twain for four hours and nobody ever really seems to mind. Really? Really? Yeah. That really yeah. gets them on the dance floor for four straight hours, huh? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a, mm-hmm. uh, is this a passion of yours? Is it a side hustle? Um, well, I wouldn't say it's a side hustle because that implies I don't make enough at my job and that I need extra income. You know what I mean, Dean? <laughs> and we yeah. know that's not true at all. <laughs> I get paid very well. So it's, it's more of just, um, it's more of just, um, um, I guess, what would you call it then? I guess it's a, um, it's, uh, it's, um, it's survival. Sure. I mean, it's okay yeah. if like, if you're looking at your paycheck and you're like, you know what, it's, I'm making 80% of what I'd like to be making, for instance. And like, well, how am I going to make up that extra 20% that I'm not getting paid with something else? Well, what you're describing is a side hustle. I, I suppose so. <laughs> and this, I am not a side hustler. I do no, not no. hustle on the side. I, I just, I just like to get out and let loose and say, mm. you know, uh, you know, Dean, like the great Shania t- said, the best part about being a woman is the prerogative to have a little fun. And that's all I'm doing on the weekends, Dean. I'm just having a little I fun. See. I see. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. good. It does. It makes sense to me that you would know a lot of Shania Twain lyrics by heart. Um, oh, yeah. You want to quiz me? You want to quiz weekend. me, Dean? Oh, oh I, I wouldn't know where to start, I don't think. I cert- no? I'm, I'm oh. certainly not in the business of rating people or things. So Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I do want to bring my first guest, uh, Ryan, back in here and oh, see good. what he has to say about all this. Um, uh, Ryan, at the very least, uh, living in Texas, you must be a country music fan. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I I'm lost a you. big. I don't, I don't oh. your mic. How about now? Yep, good. I'm a big fan of Marin Morris. I love getting renting a boat, 
blasting Marin Morris, maybe uh, bringing a pineapple cutter with my friends and listening to p- country music. It's a great vibe. Wow. Yeah, you know, actually, Ryan, Mr. Bedfellow, I, I, I didn't even recognize you. I believe I was the DJ for your wedding. Charlene, you indeed were. Oh, you what a small a, world. Wow. It, yes, yeah. and you know what? You uh, were very affordable. And yeah. Uh, I will say that you played so much Shania Twain at one point. I did have some family members inquire uh, about changing the playlist. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, most, most, uh, in most cases, everybody loves the Shania just re- on repeat for four hours. It was great. She just, you know, she has a couple of albums after the big album and uh, that were not as big. But hey, you know what? We all love to have a little fun. And uh, I think that it was great. Great to see you again, Charlene. Yeah. So you'd say the albums after her big album didn't impress you much? Oh, yeah, I would say. Yeah. (laughs) It's a little wow. Shania joke for you. Wow. I see what you did there. And I yeah. really love comedy. I went to Joe Rogan's new comedy theater in Austin. <gasps> oh. And let me tell you, I was laughing. These guys, they are not afraid to be racially charged. And it was funny. It was funny stuff. I tried to get into a show there and they would not let me in because of my because I'm a woman. But I said <laughs> respect. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think you you know it's a guy's vibe, let's just say. Yeah, it's of a guy they have wings, of course. they have whiskey, yeah. and we're all allowed to talk about uh female bodies without any inhibition. Wow. I saw a drone tour of that the, of that comedy club and it is I That mean, was my drone. Was it really? Wow! Yeah, the one I fly over my domicile. It, for of your domicile. Well, it's a it's a great drone shot, and it also really showcases the obscene amount of money that Joe Rogan spent on that theater. <laughs> yeah, it's got all the fixins. Hmm. It really does. Full time. And now, uh, were you? Was there something on that spot before that you knocked down? Uh, yeah, there was. It was an orphanage. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it was actually an orphanage of um, uh, children with gifted singing voices and they weren't paying their rent and so i said orphan, well there's a river don't. over there where you can sing near the river mm. and mm. so i i gave them a little shack you know one of those pop-up shacks you uh-huh. can get via aliexpress and so now the singing children have a pop-up shack and the non-PC comedians have a fortress of um negative energy <clears throat> You, uh, I've seen a lot of those shacks and uh, shanties and tents and things in Austin, Texas. It's almost like there's a huge problem with uh, homelessness and uh, like where these people don't have any place to live. Like, come on. Hey, I would tell them, wake up, cold plunge, mm. meditate, mm. and time box your way to greatness. Time box? Yeah. What's time yeah. boxing? Is that like air box, like, like uh, shadow boxing? No, time boxing is where you set your schedule and you commit to it so that you don't get distracted. I see. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, I always like to see, see if there's any synergy between my guests. Is there any way you all could work together? I don't know quite how that would work. Um, well, I, I certainly will not be inviting any orphans into our factory anytime soon for a tour because if they can't pay, they can't stay. So I think we do have similar beliefs, Ryan, and I do feel like in some world there is a way that our synergy can match. I completely agree, Charlene. I think that maybe in some of the new Purloin units and buildings, Mm -hmm. we can put some of your bears right in the entryway, right in the entryway. How do you feel about that? I think that's actually the perfect opportunity for our new camera bearing bears. I love it, Charlene. I'm going to have my people call your people, leave a message, and then the standard two to four weeks to reply. That is the perfect plan. So you have a bear with a camera inside of it. Well, of course. Yes. Like a nanny cam bear. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, I think that's like a three out of 10 in terms of what we would call it, Dean. Uh, it's, we wouldn't call it a nanny bear. Um, we uh-huh. would call it more of a, um, of a spy. I see. I see. Yeah. So, um, 
that, I mean, I'm assuming that could be very useful to you, uh, Ryan, in like, for yeah. instance, those vibey Airbnbs you were talking about mm-hmm. would probably mm-hmm. love to have a spy cam in one of those, right? Just to yes, make sure for you're every expo. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, that's it. That was the whole question. <laughs> I was going to say for every exposed beam, we make sure there is a bear that has surveillance installed in silence inside of it for wow. every mural there's an unassuming portrait with a small ring camera oh. installed in the center we like to have balance at purloin and uh and sorry and so so you've uh so i mean i guess if i went into an airbnb it was very vibey and had a neon sign and was playing shania twain he was playing Shania Twain, Just and mm-hmm. I would—I probably wouldn't even notice that there was a John McCain bear in the corner with a camera inside of it. That's Precisely. who it was, John McCain. Oh, that's who it was. Of course, my dad. 